When the world thinks of Hawaii, this is the image most are familiar with. Diamond head, blue water, and sandy beaches. With a rising ocean, grains of sand might be replaced with an ungiving concrete. This, unfortunately, could be the image future generations will be more familiar with. Waikiki is a very interesting uh, case study in uh, how the Hawaiian quality of life and the Hawaiian shoreline are going to be affected by sea level rise. Dr. Charles Fletcher of the University of Hawaii is studying the potential impacts of rising sea levels throughout our islands. I'm standing on wet sand from last night's high tide. Uh, you can see that the, the waves reached as far as this and uh, we're nearly into the lobby of this hotel. As sea level starts to rise, we're going to see waves running down into the uh, lower floor of the hotel, down into the parking structures and into the offices down there. His research and modeling are revealing that a rising ocean will cause significant impacts to vital areas of our islands. It's kind of an amazing thing to realize that this is the, uh, this is the center of our uh, tourism economy, Waikiki. And if you ask most tourists, they're there because they've heard so much about the beach and they want to get into the ocean and experience, experience the beach. And yet the beach disappears every day at high tide along most of Waikiki. Global warming is leading to sea level rise in two different ways. The first problem, polar ice is melting at alarming rates. Ice currently over land masses adds water to the oceans as it melts. As the melting ice runs into the ocean from land, that new water adds to the ocean's volume and the sea level rises. The second problem is the rising temperature of the ocean's surface. Warmer water expands, and that contributes to an increase in sea level. A planetary temperature rise of one to four degrees might not seem like much, but any rise in water temperature expands the oceans. There are going to be changes in Hawaii, no matter what happens. Uh, we're, we're going to lose a lot of beaches. We're going to uh, see some of our more pop populated areas, like Waikiki, um, change dramatically and we, I think we have to accept that and prepare for it today. I appreciate that uh, the average person doesn't feel the immediacy of this problem, although I do know that there are a lot of people out there worried about it. Sea level rise is not just impacting our shoreline. A rising sea will make its way inland. Eventually, we're going to become in a Venice-like situation where we'll have to continuously pump the groundwater table and uh, lower the groundwater table at great expense. The rising ocean not only affects us above ground, the salt water will contaminate utilities below the ground. An infrastructure that wasn't designed to resist salt water will now be in contact with the corrosive salt. Another problem will be the contamination of our drinking water that rests in aquifers. It actually is already happening, but is managed because fresh water is lighter than salt water and it sits on top. With sea level rise, storage of the water will be reduced because of the added salt water level. I think people take for granted our resources. With an issue like sea level rise, the impact on our, our aquifer um, is extremely critical and we should be well aware of it. If you consider the fact that if sea level rises, you know, what you're going to have is a possibility that there's, there may be a lot more contamination of these water sources as well. These are the kinds of concerns we should have now so they won't amount to a crisis later. The most expensive way to address this problem is to ignore it right now. Dr. Fletcher's computer modeling of Waikiki and downtown Honolulu reveals how major economic areas will collect salt water from the ocean. Waikiki is the center of tourism for the entire state. A daily flood will be a disruption to the economic engine of Waikiki. This work is crucial to recognizing where problems will occur, how we will be affected, and what, if any, solutions might be able to head off disaster. And I think ultimately, when sea level reaches a meter or more uh, higher than it is today, we're simply going to have to abandon Waikiki, and we're going we're to have to identify new areas where we're going to focus our tourism. Some of the most uh, prime real estate is located around, around the shoreline. Uh, Waikiki or, or other locations where there's a, there's a lot of resort development, 
uh, is likely to be affected by sea level rise. Hawaii is built around the coast. You know, we prize our beaches, we prize our surf spots, our beautiful reef. Um, and this has been this way for, for centuries. There are options we can use to manage the rising sea levels and beach erosion, but some experts say they are merely short-term solutions. Our typical reaction to coastal erosion is to build a seawall. A seawall is effective uh, at protecting the land and protecting the buildings that are behind it, but seawalls don't do anything for the sand beach in front. And in fact, with waves reflecting off that solid wall and also uh, cutting off a supply of sand from the land behind it, uh, seawalls actually tend to speed up the loss of beaches. And right now at high tide, uh, during periods of high waves, as much as 50% of Waikiki Beach um, is gone, it's, it's underwater. The walls will keep the ocean back, but we will lose the major reason tourists flock here from around the world. One problem may be solved, but many more may be created. Another option is replenishing the sand that has been washed away. But beach nourishment is expensive. Uh, it's also temporary. Many beach nourishment projects only last a year, and then they need more sand to be put on them. So that if we have one foot of sea level rise taking place over the next 50 years, we can expect 100 feet of shoreline retreat or coastal erosion to take place. I, I don't know that too many people will want to see Waikiki turn into a Venice of Waikiki, but uh, you know, I, I, I think we need to take those things uh, very seriously. At what point do you continue to doubt the possibility in the face of overwhelming evidence and uh, agreement by large populations of informed experts. So if we acknowledge that, that this is inevitable, uh, which most of the scientific community is uh, encouraging uh, our decision makers to do, then the cheapest way to approach this, the most economically viable way to approach this, is to start planning for it right now. Sea level rise is not the kind of disaster which hits quickly, like a tsunami or an earthquake, but it is a problem we are going to face. Whether it's tomorrow or 50 years away, the rising sea will not recede, and future generations will have to deal with our changing Hawaii.